Serotonin syndrome and neuroleptic malignant syndrome are typically caused by poisoning from prescription medications meant to treat mental health conditions. They may appear very similar at first. So in this MedMastery lesson, you'll learn how to distinguish between them based on your patient's clinical history and symptoms. Let's get started. Sarah and Nora are best friends. Sarah has depression and takes the antidepressant fluoxetine, and Nora has schizophrenia and takes the antipsychotic haloperidol. One day, the two friends get into a big fight. That night at a party, someone offers Sarah a tablet of ecstasy to help her feel better. A few hours later, she's irritable, sweaty, and making strange movements. Her legs, in particular, are jerking around more than the rest of her body. A friend calls for an ambulance, and Sarah is transported to the hospital. At the hospital, Sarah's temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure are all elevated. The clinician recognizes the sudden jerking movements as myoclonus and finds that her knee tendon reflexes are increased. When Sarah tells her that she took both fluoxetine and MDMA, the clinician suspects serotonin syndrome. She stabilizes Sarah and admits her to the hospital. Meanwhile, Nora is at home. Her friend calls and tells her what happened to Sarah. Because she has schizophrenia, Nora sometimes hears voices, and tonight they are particularly bothersome. They tell her, it's your fault. Nora feels horrible and decides to double up on her daily dose of haloperidol to control the voices. One week later, Nora's roommate notices that she's confused, sweaty, and her movements are stiff. Her roommate calls an ambulance to take Nora to the hospital. At the hospital, Nora's temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure are all elevated. The clinician notes that her limbs are stiff and her knee tendon reflexes are decreased. When Nora tells her that she increased her haloperidol dose last week, the clinician suspects neuroleptic malignant syndrome. She stabilizes Nora and admits her to the hospital. So what happened to these girls? Well, in Sarah's case, she already had increased serotonin activity because she took the daily antidepressant fluoxetine, and those levels increased even more when she took MDMA. In Nora's case, she experienced dopamine receptor blockade as a result of doubling her usual dose of haloperidol. As we saw with Sarah and Nora, these two syndromes may appear similar at first. In addition to their intended action on the central nervous system, drugs that lead to these syndromes also affect the peripheral nervous system. With both, we see increased heart rate, high blood pressure, and excessive sweating. Both typically present with fever, but the mechanism is different. In serotonin syndrome, the rise in temperature is a result of excessive muscle movements, whereas in neuroleptic malignant syndrome, it's due to dopamine receptor blockade in the hypothalamus. So then how do you distinguish between these syndromes? Well, serotonin and dopamine have different effects on the neuromuscular junction, which is what controls our tendon reflexes. With serotonin syndrome, there's enhanced serotonin activity, most commonly because the patient has more than one drug in their body. This increases the communication between the nerve and muscle, and the result is increased reflexes, like the knee-jerk reflex. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is not well understood, but is likely caused by excess dopamine receptor blockade. This reduces communication at this junction, and we see decreased tendon reflexes. So these two syndromes are diagnosed purely by the patient's history and physical exam. There are three questions you should ask to help you determine which syndrome you are dealing with. First, what drug did the patient take? Is it one that increases serotonin activity or blocks dopamine receptors? Second, how long did it take for the syndrome to start after the patient took the drug? Was it within 24 hours, or did it take days or weeks? Third, how are the patient's tendon reflexes? Are they increased or decreased? Both syndromes can be treated by removing the drug that causes the problem, supporting the patient with intravenous fluids, benzodiazepines, cooling, and considering antidote therapy. Many patients won't require the antidote, so it's best to discuss it with your regional poison information center or toxicology consultant. The antidote for serotonin syndrome is ciproheptadine, which blocks serotonin activity. 
The antidote for neuroleptic malignant syndrome is bromocryptine, which activates dopamine receptors. Because both syndromes can cause multiple life-threatening complications, these patients typically need to be admitted to an intensive care unit. Sarah and Nora both stabilized in the hospital and were discharged home. They both worked with their doctors to safely adjust their medications. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.